Odinworks has two similar suppressors, Enduro and Tidero. In this video, we're gonna put both through a round of scientific testing, including our first ever sound level testing and recoil testing. We're gonna recap our shooting with 338 ARC. We'll shoot 308 Winchester and shoot 300 Win Mag. And we'll also solve a mystery related to suppressor brakes. All that and more in this video. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I was recently talking to the guys over at Odinworks and they told me about their new suppressor, Tidero, and I thought, I've gotta try this because we've used Enduro. One example was when we did our 338 ARC overview, but Tidero takes things to the next level with printed titanium main body construction. Let me break this down real quick. So both of these suppressors are nine millimeter slash multi-caliber. You know, so you'll be able to shoot nine millimeter, for instance, in an AR, 338 Lapua, 300 Win Mag, down to kind of whatever you wanna shoot down on the lower end. 9.7 inches overall length. But the thing is, there's five baffles that are individually removable. And then we've also got the PSI comp brake that we could put on the end. So in terms of configurability, this is by far our most configurable suppressor that we've put through our testing yet. 1.5 inch diameter means compatibility with a lot of different suppressor covers. You can either do a QD mount or a direct thread mount. And the Tidero and Enduro have standard QD threading, so you have quite a uh, few different options that you have for the different types of quick detach mounts that you can use. Both are semi-auto rated and really the main difference is this main body section. For Tidero, it's printed and the first two baffles are integrated. Whereas you can see here in Enduro, we have 17.4 stainless for the main body and those two baffle sections actually can come apart. So there's a difference in construction and there's a difference in weight. Let me talk about the weight differences here. So for a full configuration on Enduro, you've got 18.15 ounces, whereas the same full configuration on Tidero is 14.35 ounces. So almost four ounces different. Now, all of the forward baffle sections are the same between the two, and those are aluminum construction. So I won't read through all of these specs. If you want to go a little bit more deep into the differences and calculate what all the different weights would be for different configurations, click on that first link in the video description and we'll have this information in the article. So the PSI comp break, this is going to work with either Tidero or Enduro and you can basically take a section off and screw the PSI comp break. We could even take the end cap off and screw the comp break in its place. Uh, it's a two port design. It's also nine millimeters you would expect. It's constructed of 7075 aluminum and it comes in at 2.25 ounces. So we've shot Tidero and Enduro on a bunch of different rifle configurations now, both subsonic and supersonic. We started with the Enduro and we had a shortened config that we ran on that with the 338 ARC. Those 307 subs were awesome and I did shoot without hearing protection to hear what that was gonna be like, not really too bad. And then we also shot the supersonic ammo with that same shortened config with the 338 ARC, right? So a nine millimeter suppressor is a great pairing there because you know some like 30 caliber suppressors are obviously gonna be too small in terms of the baffles and whatnot to run with a 338 ARC. So that just kind of underscores the kind of flexibility that you're gonna get with this kind of setup. We just did a video featuring Shorty, which is this rifle, our 16 inch 308 Winchester. And that was really focused on subsonics. And we ran this configuration right here, sort of the min, min Tidero plus one baffle. That kept the overall length really short. And we were shooting hand loads that we had loaded with Barry's 220 grain plated bullets. These are economical, they're totally fun, and we were hammering a game size target at 200 yards off of a tree branch, no problem, right? So, you know, we both run both subsonic and we've also run both supersonic. Now for the scientific testing, we took 308 Winchester supersonic and we also tested 300 Win Mag, which we've got down here. 
So another quick mention about our Ultimate Reloader Recoil Rig. This was a rig that was originally based on Cal Zant's design. He runs the Precision Rifle blog. We've kind of evolved it in to meet our needs a little bit better. So we've got the sled. The sled is welded steel construction. I've got a bolt-on front lip that can catch a concrete slab. The alternative would be to bolt the entire unit to a concrete floor, something like that. But what this measures is rearward forces. And it's as if the rifle is butted up against a concrete wall. And you can feel the forces between the buttstock and the concrete wall. So it's not exactly what you're gonna feel with your shoulder because your shoulder moves and your shoulder compresses. But what we can do is we can very accurately compare one configuration to another. It could be an increase in powder charge, it could be an increase in bullet weight, it could be different brakes, different suppressors, different weights. We just did an entire video on the relationship between the weight of the rifle and the recoil of the rifle. Really interesting stuff, and this is based off a Duasoft Sirius 8 channel data acquisition module, which is capable of up to 200,000 samples per second. We've got a PCB piezo electronics load cell. Now, we're also using this do a soft DAC module with a couple really high-end scientific microphones from PCB piezo electronics as well. And so that's why we need a DAC module that can record at 200,000 samples per second. If you don't have that kind of time resolution, you're gonna miss these peak pressure phenomena, right? So this is the kind of setup that you need to do these kinds of measurements. So the tests that we ran first were with 308 Winchester. And on the recoil rig and for the sound level testing, we used supersonic loads that we had loaded. Okay, so starting with sound level testing. Now this was my first foray into formal sound level testing here on the channel. We've got the Duasoft Sirius 8 channel hardware DAC module, but then also in the software, which is called Duasoft X, we've got a very advanced DB plugin that's going to take the sound pressure waveform and calculate decibels from that. So what I've got here are the different tests that we ran sorted from the quietest to the loudest. So Tyduro min baffles with brake, interestingly, was the quietest. Tyduro all baffles was right next to it. Now part of what's going on here is we've got a lot of clearance between a 30 caliber projectile and these baffles because we've got a nine millimeter uh, baffle stack here, right? If we were to tighten that up and use a 30 caliber baffle stack, we would probably see different behaviors here and different sound level tests. But what was interesting here was from our testing, which again, this is preliminary, we're using 0.4 meters from the muzzle and which is basically based on the, the NATO guidelines. We're kind of in the 140s for all these until we get to bare muzzle, which was 161.4, and then the brake, 164.1, right? We've got this radial brake. It does a fairly good job of diffusing all of the high velocity gases in a 360 pattern, but it is louder with the brake, as you would expect. And so, interestingly, you know, the, the results did not vary as much as I thought they would. There wasn't as much of a difference between the full stack and, and the minimum stack, for instance, that kind of thing. So we're gonna do a little bit more research into our specific setup and review these test results with our partners in the industry and refine accordingly for our next round of sound level testing. Okay, so then we did recoil tests with the recoil rig and what we saw was this, the high peak there is the bare muzzle, and then the rest of the results were actually pretty close. Here's a detailed breakdown. So we had the bare muzzle, and then the min config, and then all baffles and all baffles with brake were pretty close, and the actual muzzle brake was close until a little bit later when the bullet is traveling through the baffles. You can see there, number five down there, and that kind of has a little bit of a a lower trail off there when that braking effect comes into play. The really interesting thing here was all baffles versus all baffles with brake. Very close, right? So I went back to Odenworks and we had 
a discussion uh, with one of their engineers and what they came up with was, well, our, the testing they did was with 300 wind mag. There's a lot more gas pressure with 300 wind mag. So in terms of testing the effectiveness of this PSI comp break, I decided it was time to run the recoil tests again with 300 wind mag. You can see here the difference between 308 Winchester with the 220 grain subsonic bullets and 195, this is Hornady match factory ammunition with 300 wind mag, right? The, the difference in powder here is, is tremendous. So we ran the tests again, and here's the different tests that we ran. We ran bare muzzle, then tie duro with all baffles, tie duro with all baffles with the last baffle swapped out with the brake, tie duro min baffles, tie duro min baffles, one baffle plus a brake, then a Sounser Co Omega 300, which has an integrated brake that is removable, but had it in place. And then finally, uh, the Bergara radio brake that comes with a rifle like this 300 Win Mag here. So what I wanted to do next is take you into a Soft X and kind of walk through these results as the results came in. Okay, so I've got the Duasoft X app open here. This is the one that's connected to the DAC module when you're recording data. Now we have that data file open and we're able to do some post-processing and kind of review the results. So each of these peaks in green here represent the different shots. So the first shot, bare muzzle, you can see here, has a very nice clean shape to it and it goes up to over 600 pounds. Then we have Tyduro with all baffles. And you can see there's quite a difference in peak forces there, right? The, the top point of, of that trace. Now we put on the brake and with 300 wind mag, I'm hoping we see a good reduction in peak forces here. Boom, look at how far that went down. Now we're getting into the operational sweet spot of this PSI comp brake. The 308 Winchester just didn't have enough gas to expel out the sides and to, to see much of a difference, if any difference at all. But here, the difference is substantial. Okay, so then we've got min baffles and then min baffles with brake. Let's see what happens there. Boom, way down there, just real close to all of the baffles with the brake, interestingly. And then we've got Silencer Co. Omega 300 with brake, boom, right down there with the other braked configs. And then finally, we've got the muzzle brake itself, which is also in there and almost entirely equivalent. Fascinating. So one way to visualize the results are the individual traces uh, in the Duasoft X app. The other way is to look at graphs, right? So here are the different tests in order. And if we sort these from low recoil peak forces to high recoil peak forces, they come out like this, right? Tyduro all baffles with brake, Bergara radio brake, Omega 300 with brake, and Tyduro min baffles with brake are almost at the same level. 216, 227, 229, 231, right? And when we go to Tyduro all baffles, we jump from 231 up to 378, and then Tyduro min baffles up to 507.4, and then bare muzzle at 617.1. Now these force numbers are actually a lot lower than the ones that we saw when we ran 308 Winchester. And the reason is the 308 Winchester, the stock we were using that day, had a very stiff butt pad, like the rubber did not give much at all. Whereas the Bergara comes with a very cushy butt pad and that still gives us really clean, really legitimate data. It just stretches the time domain out and that lowers the peak forces, right? It makes sense. That is the purpose of having a high quality butt pad that has a lot of compressibility to it. Now, someone remarked in one of my recent videos, Backstop, from Jim Harmer's Backfire channel. And I thought, yeah, it would be really interesting to test that because he's got a really interesting kind of open lattice pattern and he optimizes those designs for different rifle stocks. So we'll probably be coming back to that. 
So basically, we were able to solve the mystery of why the suppressor brake, the PSI comp, didn't really do much with 308 wind. It's just a the matter of the more magnum you get, the more difference you're gonna see, right? And if you're not pushing a lot of gas, like we had a 223 or something like that, then I probably wouldn't run it. Okay, so I learned a lot here. This was really awesome, and I'm a big fan of these suppressors. With Odin's tool, you can take apart stuck baffle sections, you know, if you get some, you know, if they're packed with carbon, carbon locking or something like that. Um, and I love the configurability. Uh, at the two different price points, I think both are good options, but if you have the spend, I would definitely go with Tidero because of the lightweight nature. And that is accentuated more when you're running a short config, right? Because then a lot of the weight is the main body, right? So that difference in the main body weight becomes pretty meaningful. Nine millimeter is great for flexibility, right? We were able to shoot 338, 30 cal, and a seven millimeter, we could shoot a 22, right? It's great, but we're not getting peak sound level reduction with open baffles like that, right? If you're shooting a 30 cal through a 338 baffle, it's not quite as efficient for sound level reduction, but it does give you the flexibility to run different calibers. So that's something that you have to decide for yourself. Definitely the price and weight are the trade-offs here between the Tyredero and the Enduro. Uh, again, it's just something that you have to decide based on your pocketbook and based on your requirements. If it's for a lightweight hunting rifle, Tidero is definitely uh, the, west, the way to go. And to recap yet again, yes, the PSI comp brake will work better when you're pushing more gas. Uh, cartridges with more powder charge, right? That kind of thing. Uh, and the short configs worked great for our subsonic loads. Here's what I'd like to know. I'd like to know a couple things. First, what do you think about Enduro and Tidero? Are these cans that you would run? Tell me in the comment section why or why not. And then second, what did you think about the tests that we performed this time? Was it helpful to have sound level tests? Uh, and then the comparison of different you know, cartridges for recoil, that kind of thing. If you can think of something else that you'd like to see in these suppressor tested stories, by all means, let me know and again, drop a comment. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives, and hot deals, just hold your camera phone up to the QR code, tap on the link, fill out the information, boom, you're getting Ultimate Reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.